Hello everyone and welcome. Now today I'm talking once again to Rory Duff. It was two years ago that we last spoke about what's happening on the planet with regards to uh, earth lines and things like this. There is a lot that has been happening in the last two years. So Rory's here with me today to update us and take us forwards. Welcome Rory. Good morning, Sarah. Thank you very much for asking me back. Well, there's been all sorts of exciting stuff going on, I know, and um, lots of changes coming through. So I think it would be really helpful to anyone who's interested to have some indication of, of what's happening and what's going forward. So, uh, <laughs> excuse the dogs in the background. Um, yeah, could I ask you to maybe pick up from where we were last time, which was we were still waiting for two of the big Emperor Dragon lines, and maybe you could just tell people a little bit about what the Emperor Dragons are, but we were waiting for two of them to arrive on the planet. Yes, thank you. Um, yes, that does take us back a couple of years now, which is, uh, feels a long time ago. It does. Um, the, the, the first good news is that... Uh, Yes, the the two dragons have, have, have now reappeared, and I'll explain how that works in, in, in a moment. But um, the the first one came, uh, the fifth one came around about December, January of 2019, and uh, the last one uh, came. Oh, it started coming in about April 2019 and finished in about July 2019. It's, it really took its time to sort of, of build and grow. Um, that meant finding where they were in the world and finding where they crossed the other emperor dragons because where they cross each other were the first em first order nodes of, of supreme significance when it comes to energies and energy work and um, and uh, to the local people who would be living near to these places. So I can perhaps talk a little bit about some of those. Mm -hmm. um, but perhaps if I just explain the mechanism behind this, uh, and um, we, we may have to revisit this later, but it essentially uh, energy lines are continual projections of energy that we find on the surface of the earth. Uh, it's not two dimensional, it's three dimensional. They're concentrations of energy within a field of energy. So it's not like it's just on its own. When you're outside a line, you're still in the field of energy, but inside is a concentration zone of very very low frequency vibrations and these have to be coming from the core of our earth because the lines move as the earth rotates a bit like the magnetic pole that rotates as the as the earth rotates as well because magnetism also is, is stemming from the center of the earth and we think that the inner core which is solid likely to be iron and nickel is behaving like a transducer which takes one form of energy and transvert or converts it to another form of energy, in, in this case, very, very low frequency sound. Uh, it's not just sound though, it seems that, that this, this sub-audible sound, this very low frequency is very much connected to the universal consciousness, but I won't talk about that side just yet. So if you're gonna have new energy lines appearing on the surface, the, this energy has to come from somewhere. Mm -hmm. And at the moment, we've got uh, the Earth's electromagnetic field providing the energy around the inner core, which could be converted to sound energy. Yeah. But yeah. there are also vehicles for providing sources of energy external to the Earth. One is the sun, and the others are active galactic nuclei from us outside our solar system. And, and the mechanics behind how that works is... Uh, through cosmic energy. Now, cosmic energy can come from the sun, it can come from the active galactic nuclei, and it, it, it travels through space, but when it hits our atmosphere, it converts to gamma rays and neutrinos. Neutrinos are high energy, almost massless particles that can travel pretty much straight through the Earth. Mm. And they do get slightly diffracted by the inner core, and, and that diffraction imparts energy to the inner core. And as soon as the inner core receives energy, it's transduced outwards again uh, as a field of energy with concentrations. And, and we pick these concentrations up in a linear way on the surface. So the appearance of an emperor dragon, if you like, is suddenly when we have a source of cosmic energy, 
which has managed to get through mm. into our atmosphere, into neutrinos, into the core, and then out again onto the surface. And the reason they come and go over all these years is because uh, the, the actual sources of this cosmic energy are very often uh, shielded on the passage from their source, and they're shielded through magnetic fields. And uh, as soon as you have a magnetic field, the cosmic energy doesn't come through. Yeah. And, and mm. We've got <clears throat> three magnetic fields that surround us. Uh, what is our own magnetic field? There's, then there's the sun's magnetic field, and then there's the uh, little uh, interstellar cloud, local interstellar cloud that the solar system has been sitting in for some time. Mm. But we're now finding that but all three of those magnetic fields are, are lowering. And mm. just the lowering has allowed this use extra sources of cosmic energy to come through. And we think that this uh, raising and lowering of the shields and this, uh, this uh, pulsing of these uh, cosmic energies are cyclical over really long periods of time. And because they're cyclical, uh, it, it allows an element of prophecy to, be, to, be, uh, to, be, to come into this. In other words, um, the, the universal mind or the, the, the mind of uh, whatever you'd like to choose to call it, can be tapped into mm. and, and it can predict likelihoods of things happening on long-term scales. Uh, and um, w w we're left with a situation where we we've got lowering magnetic fields right now. We've got uh, all sources of, of active galactic nuclei now through it coming through it as neutrinos, as energy into our inner mm. core. And they're projecting finally... Uh, all six emperor dragons, the type five lines on the surface. And, and that, that's where we are now. And this has massively increased the energy of, of the earth. Uh, and it, it, just as it is, but that's not all. Um, it's like charging up a huge grid. It's affecting everything. I'd yes. say that, yeah. Mm. Yes. Uh, um, and although we're talking about uh, uh, very low frequency uh, vibrations, there's a, a, a definitely a connection at that very tiny level with uh, electromagnetism as well. And, mm. and there's a good reason to think that this is why the Schumann resonance uh, has increased in power. Uh, right. Yeah. Strength, yeah. And, and to such an extent that its, its higher harmonics are beginning to be picked up more, more readily as well. For than the 7.8, there's also the harmonics above that that people are picking up. Because it's so the, certainly gone to some very high peaks, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. And and, mm -hmm. and this this is this is a huge cycle of time that is, is looking now likely to be roughly every 12,000 years. So mankind hasn't been through this for a very long time. And um, there looks like if you look back through the archaeological record and through uh, the astronomical records that, that uh, there were some kind of uh, world shifting changes around 12,000 and 24,000 and uh, 36,000 years ago uh, that we can detect in various ways uh, looking back at, uh, at a variety of, of, of um, parameters basically. So we're about to go through this again. And, and what, what intrigued me was this, uh, this connection to uh, prophecies and, and symbolism. And uh, these earth energy lines are universally recognized in, or symbolized in, in cultures all around the world as serpents. And, yeah. and dragons. So we can look back at the, the cultural cultures that have myths and legends uh, and in, in regards to the stories they talk about the, the dragons and, and the serpents mm. to see whether or not there is uh, some commonality amongst them all and this is where i, I wrote my book uh, grail bound because that talks about a universal prophecy and, and a lot of uh, modern day uh, prophets if you like have also picked up on, on uh, similar uh, universal symbols of snakes and serpents mm. uh, and returning catastrophes. And uh, that seems very much now linked to what we're about to go through. And, and we're even given pretty good dates. Um, but one of the things I'd like to update you with is, is some of the more interesting uh, astronomical discoveries as yeah. well. Uh, yes, absolutely. Uh, yeah, and, and can I just, just interrupt very quickly here and yeah. say to everybody watching, if they haven't signed up to Rory's mailing list, please do so, roryduff.com. 
because <laughs> because you keep people updated every every month, don't you, on what's happening? Mm. Yeah, it's it is a, a changing world, and we try yes. and sort of. <laughs> <laughs> it's coming through thick and fast at the moment <laughs> bring things together in, in a more meaningful and understanding way we don't know everything that's going to happen in fact that's one of the challenges we have we have to be aware and we have to learn what's going on and to share what what's going on with, with each other uh, because this is very new yeah, yeah. Mm. yes but to, to put it, it in some, in some <laughs> framework um which I think is important to do because it's some of the more recent information that, that I found, which was, which is, uh, which is relevant. And I'd like to just first touch on, on uh, a piece of work that I've been studying for several years now done by uh, um, a, a, a German philosopher called uh, Wolfgang uh, von Goethe. And he wrote a book called, uh, a, a, wrote a fairy tale. Uh, and this heavily symbolized fairy tale has a particular character in it called the green snake. And the green snake is the only character that actually uh, is able to tell uh, when the time is at hand. Uh, it's just with regards to this final prophecy. And um, it, it struck me as very pertinent that the green snake was, uh, again, a universal symbol for the earth energy lines. And what I took from this, when, and, and, I, and I wrote a book about this, which you can find on the website, what I took from this was that the, the energy lines actually are what can tell us when this final prophecy is going to occur. So if we look at the changes of the energy lines, like the, the advent of these, these uh, th three uh, uh, emperor dragons, which have come in the last three years, yeah. uh, we can begin to tell when these uh, earth changing and, and life changing and, and evolutionary changes are, are going to take place. And, and I mention this um, because we can start looking at some of the more recent observations and seeing how, what we can tell astronomically from this. Yeah. Mm. And, and I want to take your, uh, take you back to a time. This is around about 2000, a 2009 I began looking at the nature of earth energy lines and how they moved mm. um, and what, what you tend to find is that where you have a sacred site there's a node and you have another sacred site there's another node and, and the lines don't move at nodes they're fixed in yeah. between the nodes so they kind of like move side to side a bit like a guitar string and when you start monitoring the side to side movement of these energy lines, they, they develop a frequency and it's very, very slow. It's like six hours to go one way, six hours to go the other way, which is why mm. we talk about vibrations down in the microhertz you know, yeah. level. But it was, the, you know, I spent 18 years, so I spent 18 months studying the movements of 12 lines every day and I recorded them. And, and the particular lines that I want to draw attention to, we call type three lines. All of these type three lines, every roughly seven to 10, maybe 11 days, they would be all over the place. They wouldn't be moving together at all. But, but mm. after that period of time, there would be two days of absolutely perfect timing between them all. This and is all in we, harmony. All in harmony for, for around two days. And, uh, I, I picked up these harmony periods and there was one time there's seven, seven days and then it became harmony. And then it was eight days and it became a harmony period, then nine days. Then it was back to eight days. So there was a cycle to this mm. and I never understood why. And I never understood why there was always two days of harmony when they, all the, the type three lines moved exactly to the one side and then stopped at the same time and then back to the other side. And it was only recently that I, I found out something that matched this astronomically, which is what, suddenly brought on a light bulb moment. Now, I need to just talk about the harmony times with these type three lines, because when you've got a, 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 a crossing over intersection with, with harmony lines, that's with, with just one type of line, it's like a large vortex. Yeah. And if you've got them all in harmony, you then get these vortex shapes forming. So the energy yeah. changes during this harmony time and you get vortexes. And there's also a, a period of harmony when all the energy lines, all the different types of energy lines come into harmony four times a year. Uh, and that's always started the day before 
the solstices and the equinoxes. And it used to last yeah. like half a day and maybe last about 10, 12, 14 hours. But over the last five years, it's crept up and the harmony times are now lasting for six days. So that harmony time has been increasing. It's a huge increase. Yeah. And during that harmony time, at these nodes, the symmetrical nodes, you get fantastic new energy shapes forming. You get, uh, yeah. Within, within the cylinder of energy, you get a large vortex, much bigger than a normal vortex. And, mm. and that vortex sucks in the sides of the cylinder and it collapses into a double torus. Mm. And that double torus with the vortex in the middle is a shape that then lasts for this period of time. So the harmony times allow us to connect more deeply or more accurately uh, with the, the universal consciousness. And, and there's a lot of other things that, that are connected with that. So they're the special <laughs> moments. Mm. Uh, which is why we do the gatherings and group meditations on, on those moments. But here we are now looking at just the type three lines. Uh, every eight to 10 days, they came into harmony for just two days. And uh, listening to uh, a, a very good um, uh, YouTube channel called Suspicious Observers and, and a chap that runs it, Ben Davidson there. So I'm going to plug to him for, for really being on top of the game here with regards to changes in, in cosmology mm. he's very much a, in favor of the, the plasma cosmology and, and, and understands what we're going through from an, an astro astronomical point of view and he was talking about uh, the magnetic fields that we find around the earth and the sun and the way we perceive these mm. and uh, there's something which is called the, the, the uh, heliospheric current sheet now, this heliospheric current sheet is something which stretches out along the sort of equatorial plane of the sun. Okay. And it, and it goes throughout the, the, the solar system on the plane of the solar system because the, the planets around the sun pretty much follow the, the plane yeah. in, 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 in the solar system around the sun. But this, this solar current sheet, it's not flat. It's actually wavy. It's rippled. Okay. And the, the Earth passes through these ripples, okay, of the current sheet, mm. uh, which is part of the rotating magnetic field of, of, of the of, of the of the Sun, and the Earth passes through this these ripples in, in, in the heliospheric current sheet, roughly every eight to ten days, and oh, the, and wow. the, and the width, <laughs> I know, better, better, the, 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 the width of this sheet is around 10,000 kilometers, and it takes the Earth roughly two days to pass through this current sheet. So I'm thinking, oh my goodness. <laughs> this is now linking to the type three behavior. And yeah. you've got a perfect mechanism for why it should be sometimes nine, 10 days before the current sheet. Uh, mm -hmm. before it comes to harm and sometimes why it's only seven days. Yeah. And that's because if you think of a ripple going up and down, you haven't got equal distances between each side of the ripple. So yeah. you, could be, you could be going through near the top or the bottom of the ripple yeah. and go out of the ripple into the next one Yes. in a shorter time than if you were going through the middle between the ripple, which would be a longer time to go Absolutely. through the ripple. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. The, the Earth's passage, depending, and, and of course, it's never quite the same with the tilt of everything and the swing. So you're going through, and obviously what's happening is that when we're in the middle of the, the, the solar current sheet, uh, it's creating some form of harmony within these lines. So there's obviously some connection with, with the, uh, the, the magnetic field and our Earth's core and our Earth's magnetic field, which is bringing all these energy lines into the same sort of movement. And, yeah. and, and it's orchestrated, if you like, by our inner core. But this, this now takes me into a, a, a consideration of thinking, well, the model here is not just for the sun. And not just for the earth it, it yeah. actually it's the same model uh, with regards to our own uh, solar system our own uh, sorry our own uh, no, galaxy the milky way galaxy and, yeah. and the core of our milky way galaxy you know somewhere near sagittarius b that too has this toroidal magnetic field just like the sun's toroidal magnetic field mm. and and we know uh, again you, you can check it out this that that the galaxy has a galactic current sheet so that the ripples are much 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 bigger yeah yeah mm. and what's been been uh, worked out is that the ripples 
from the certain distance from the center of the galaxy, because the further you get from the center of the galaxy, the, the ripples get bigger, just like, you know, our distance from the, from the sun determines yeah. um, how fast we go through from one ripple to the next. What's well, the same ripple, but through one part of the wave to the next part of the wave. And it would appear that the solar system passes through the galactic rippled current sheet roughly every 12,000 years. Okay. But yeah, you see, it's, it's not just every 12,000 years. It's slightly different. Just like the eight to 10 days is slightly different for the, for the earth passing through the sun's ripple sheet. We've got possibly 12 and a half thousand or 11 and a half thousand, depending on where we are with the, the ripple sheet. That makes sense. Roughly speaking, it's roughly every 12,000 years, but we can't be predicting something like it's clockwork here. Yeah. There's gonna be a variation from one time to another time. Yeah. But what this now means is, Every 12,000 years, when our solar system goes through the galactic current sheet, something must happen. And there's two things which come from the center of our galaxy, which we've got to be mindful of. One mm -hmm. is plasma energy, and the other is cosmic energy. And what's, what's the difference between the two for an ignoramus? Well, the, the plasma is very much to, uh, electro, electromagnetic. Uh, mm. There's uh, um, just, and the, and the cosmic energy is, very much like the uh, um, cosmic cosmic rays, uh, which in, when, when they hit us, as I said before, it, they turn into, into gamma rays and neutrinos. So from right, a cosmic yeah, yeah. point of view, we're getting an influx of neutrinos. Yeah. Okay? But from the plasma point of view, the effects that we're finding, and actually on the, the uh, planets in our solar system, the effects of the changing magnetic energy is already uh, changing the amounts of earthquake, earthquakes on Mars. It's changing the, the magnetic fields in, 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 on Saturn and in Pluto. There's already evidence on, on, on that's of disturbance, magnetic disturbance on, on our planet. Yeah. But it also is going to probably be what's responsible for our current position with our lowering magnetic fields. Yeah, because they are lowering uh, dramatically, aren't they? Yeah, and the sun's reducing magnetic fields to an extent as well. So we're actually being affected by electrically with this advancing uh, as our solar system come towards the galactic ripple. Okay? Yeah. And uh, we're in this transition zone right now. And when we hit it, we're going to be hit with a plasma wave and a cosmic wave. But right yeah. now, we're just building up towards that. So that's the sort of physical mechanism behind it. But what I found interesting was that just like the type three lines, we took two days to go through the 10,000 kilometers. Mm. It would appear that it takes us between 180 and 200 years for the solar system to pass through the galactic current sheet. It's the same thing, just on a much, much bigger, much, scale. Much bigger scale. Yeah, yeah. And if we look at the harmony time with the type threes, yeah. and, we, and, and we can think of the, the vortexes appearing because of the magnetic fields interacting with our magnetic fields, just for those two days when we're going through the, the, the heliospheric current sheet, what are we then experience with harmony yeah. when we go through the galactic current sheet? So we're now going to get all things coming in harmony for 180 to 200 years. That is quite mind boggling. <laughs> this, this, this now is, is so much like, What's, what people talk about, the golden age, yeah. uh, the, 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 the Satya Yuga. These are the great giant cycles that come every 12,000 years. Uh, and, and we're going to yeah. be hit with that. Yeah. Now that sounds, you know, the, the talk of harmony and a great golden age and things like that sounds absolutely wonderful. And yet here now, at uh, this precise moment, if you stop and look around you, it's anything but or seems to be anything but how do you equate the two? Um, I'll make sense of it. <laughs> She's I, I think, <laughs> oh, I think the, first, the first thing to say is humans uh, are, are, are creatures of habit. And, and uh, it's a bit like the, the ball rolling downhill and coming mm. to a stop. There's a natural desire for us to come to rest. Yes, okay, and yes. To, 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 to want to have things as they are. 
yeah. uh, to control our surroundings. Because if you think back to the old days, you know, we, we, we would need to survive. And it's that survival instinct of building a house and fortress and protecting ourselves and wanting things to stay the same. Mm -hmm. And anything new was a threat. Yeah. And what we're going through right now, it, 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 it's physical, but it's also psychological. It's also yeah. emotional. It, it's, it's everything which is destabilizing in, in our external yeah. world, in our external yeah. environment. And, and people are fa facing uh, new ways of thinking and new ways of feeling because of this. Yeah. And it scares them because they're not mm -hmm. used to it. Yeah. And when people are scared, they then take actions without thought. Mm. Um, and in this particular case, I think we're seeing massive divisiveness and, and polarization uh, between ways of thinking. Uh, and, and dogma, fixed thinking is something which is just not the right thing to do right now. Yeah, because that, that was, I mean, that leads us really into the next question. I, it's a little unfair of me asking you this as though you were the sort of fount of all knowledge because you're, you're guessing your way through this as much as the rest of us. I realise that, but you have, you, you have understanding of this and have given it some thought. So, you know, how, what are we going to be seeing playing out and how can we best respond to it within what you understand? Um, which is, a, as I say, it's a little unfair to put you on the spot, but I don't... <laughs> well, the first, the, first, I I, 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 the, the first thing to say is that none of us can really say exactly what's going to happen. Mm. And, and the other thing to say is we don't know yet what we must do. Yeah. But there, there is this aspect of this where if we sit back and do nothing, then we miss a potential opportunity. So if we don't want to miss a potential opportunity coming into this amazing age, we need to ask ourselves, what must we do and, and how must we prepare? And, 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 and those questions we don't fully yet appreciate. It's, it's like mm -hmm. we don't yet have the answers because we don't understand the thinking. Yes. But as we go through the transition, uh, all I can say is that uh, we need to have a mindset that's not rigid. It's got to be flexible. We've got to be prepared to think, to chuck out everything we used previously thought of yeah. uh, and accept this change, embrace this change. But we can't come up with the answers ourselves. It's like yeah. this, uh, this massive puzzle that we're only going to be able to succeed if we learn to come together. Yes. It's like each of us are different and individual for a reason. And if we can't overcome our difficulties and differences, then we won't find the magic combination of, of, of information yeah. uh, in regards to what we have to learn to do. And, mm. and, and what, if we're thinking about on a, on, a, on a psychological levels, if you like, on how this is affecting us, we're, we're like moving from a time where we've had the, the rise of the ego mm. and individual consciousness. And, and as, as Steiner talks about these, these changes from individual consciousness to group consciousness, Mm. And I think this is where we're going to move into this 180, 200 years of group consciousness, um, which is not like everyone thinking the same thing, but it's our ability to, to sense similar things. So we, we will find already that there's an, a sensitivity to lies, yeah. increased telepathy, increased empathy. And I think the sensitivity to lies is, is where some of the, the uh, problems now exist in the world because... Yeah. Just, if you're interested in the truth and reality, <laughs> you, you, you see, someone starts talking and you can feel it's not right. Yeah, yeah. And, and it is, it is I, I mean, I see that amongst friends, amongst family, where there is this, this complete polarizing coming in, where, um, as you say, the ability to sense something that's not true, but somebody else has hold this, held this particular view or belief for the whole of their lives. And they're not moving from it because that's what they know. And they have to redefine the whole life if they let go of it. it but, you know, the potential for, for um, conflict, which is where we're at at the moment, is, is huge. But we've got to be able to move beyond that, is what you're saying. Well, the, the first thing to recognise is what's driving this, and this is fear. Mm. And, and yeah. um, some of the most fearful people right now on the planet are the politicians. They're mm. very, very frightened. Yeah. And this is why they're putting so much control mechanisms into place. They can sense what's going on. They've probably got the data to know that no one believes them. 
You know, yes, so that's, absolutely. <laughs> if you're sitting there as, as, as a president or a prime minister and you're reading like in the social media that 90% of people think that what you're doing is rubbish. Yeah. And you're sitting on a powder keg here and you don't you know are. what to do. Yeah. Mm. Do I bring the military in? Do I bring the, you know, just, just, it's just lock everything down because mm. they're worried for their lives. They're worried for their livelihoods and that fear. And of course, if you, if you're at the old egos, what you find is that uh, these huge businessmen, these large owners of so much, mm. their fear of losing everything yeah. is supplanted by increased ego. Yeah. Because the increase of their ego suppresses their fear, which is still there. So yes. they need bigger and bigger egos yes. to suppress their fears. Yeah. Find where ego is going, because we're moving back into sort of group consciousness. Mm -hmm. They then have nothing to replace the ego to suppress their fears, and this huge fear has been felt and it's being pushed because they don't like the feeling, and then yeah. they're producing the control. So yeah. I think the first thing is understanding why we're getting control mechanisms put forward and, and, and why these people are doing it. Because the, 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 and, and then there's another aspect to this, which I'll come to in a minute. But it, well, first of all, understand why they're doing this. But secondly, it's to recognize that actually what they're doing is kind of helping us. Yes. Yeah. This is the really weird thing is because we, are, we too have our own fears. Yeah. And we need to be confronted with bigger and bigger challenges to overcome our weaknesses yeah we can't suppress we'd we actually suppression of fears is not right we need to actually uh, overcome our negative emotions by having recognized them yes and moving on and switching to positive mm -hmm. that's a challenge um, but but i think if enough of us do that and we come together in a positive way and accept group consciousness is something which is a, a, a wonderful thing to embrace and this is not, you're not talking about, I mean, there's plenty out there who have seen, um, you know, Star Trek and the Borg and things like that. You're not talking about that when we, you say group consciousness, because I know some, one or two I've spoken to are like, oh my God, you know, we're all going to become drones sort of thing. Um, that's not, that's not what, what you, you know, we still, we bring our individual gifts and talents to the collective is, is what you're saying. Yeah, we're not the collective. Um, we're not going to be part. We're not going to become Borg-like, taking mm -hmm. orders from one one person. Because there's there's still this uh, free will. There's still this choice. But what you'll find is you can you can connect. You won't need probably won't need telephones. You yeah. won't need mobiles. You'll be able to to connect and telepathically tune into someone that you've already built this relationship with, so that you can listen to what they have to say and you can connect that way you can feel mm. what they're feeling and you can you can obviously shut that out as well that that, that, that will be a choice um but but beyond this you know i'm not sure i mean we're, we're talking yeah. about a harmony time here and this is where, where if you start looking at some of the uh past uh prophecies about the previous time in particular the australian Abor aborigines and, and the uh the spirits that they they, they talk about the one gina uh, and, and the the world that, that, that existed back then in the time of dreams and, and, and dreaming and the connection to that with dream, the dream time science and, we, and you begin to think that um, there's more to this harmony that's coming than we can possibly imagine yeah this is a this is a point where all the worlds all the different frequency of worlds will be coming together and merging so there's matter merging. This is like the flower mm. of life coming together as one. But, mm. but it's also the, the different frequencies of the world. We all have, all the beings on the different frequencies will have different perceptions of time. So yeah. there's, a, there's a merging of perception of time. Mm. So it's, it's, it's like you could be walking down the street one moment and the next minute you could like be phasing in and out of a dream or what you would, you would think is a dream and, 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 like ghosts could appear and then disappear as you sort of phase in and out. And this mm. is kind of really scare people. Yeah. Because the, the old legends are, are talking about people who came down from the sky, the people who uh, like giants and, and uh, mm. other, other beings uh, that walk among us. This is the, 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 and, and are we talking about uh, 
what, what Goethe talks about in his book, that the permanent bridge between the land of the senses and the land of the spirit, uh, where people go backwards and forwards. So we're talking about uh, at these uh, nodes, these, these uh, um, dream time sites where these emperor dragons cross and maybe the, the, the solar type four lines. These are portals and gateways, which will just be open. Yeah. And it's like you're, you're able to move, not just and meditating at these places and your mind's being able to, to move into these different worlds. There, there's talk of physical movement. I mean, the, the, uh, yeah. the Quero talk about the, 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 the return of the gods and yeah. the return of the ancestors and the portal to the gateway to the gods and the gateways to the ancestors. They're different portals, different times. But we're talking about all sorts of things could be happening. Mm. Uh, and, and that's, that's going to be the challenge ahead of us isn't isn't it um because actually we we now we live in a society where the majority of people are really not open to the fact that there are other beings invisible beings other you know living at other frequency levels and things like this that, so that that's been suppressed as being fairy stories so there isn't even an openness to if this does happen actually understanding what's happening so you know, people who are listening to this, people who are tuning in at that level are going to have a certain degree of responsibility to help others when strange things start happening. And, and they, if I'm honest, Rory, they already are happening. I've yeah. had people coming to me with, with um, stories they're trying to make sense of uh, in thinking they've got mental health issues when they haven't. It's just this strange phasing, as you say. Uh, it, it's it's happening yes uh, i am getting uh huge synchronicities occurring with dreams uh and re everyday life and pe what people are seeing and experiencing um again uh, i i don't know where it's heading but i do know we need to be flexible we need to help others mm. um and I, I come back to what we're told is we we, we need to fast and pray uh, and pray to me is the same as meditate and you need to do that at, at uh, sacred sites around the world local to you um form small groups form networks communities local to you come together and, and um at least have a spiritual connection uh, and, and a group meditation and, and start doing this on the harmony times that we have now and through connecting, we will be given the information we need. Uh, there's no yeah. one solution. There's no one thing that one group of people need to be doing. It's like we need to find the answers from sources from all over the place. Yeah. And um, partly what I'm, I'm doing at the moment with these uh, new um, spiritual discussion groups and modules that, I, I, that we, we talked about Sarah putting together is to, mm -hmm. is to help people ask the questions. Yes. It's not about telling people what to do is helping people ask the right questions so that they can get the information coming through to mm. them and sharing that information. And it could be that uh, the information that we all need has to come from different sources and it has to be shared yeah. for the whole thing to unlock for us. So there's, there's that aspect of it, but we have to stay positive in the face of what will be great evil, great fear, great anger, uh, great despair, uh, great chaos. And, and, and we have to move from that to uh, peacefulness, uh, positive expectation uh, mm. of um, and, um, joy as opposed to yeah. sadness. So there's and, a degree that, of mastery of the emotions that's required there. Yes. So, and mm. but it, again, that's just the emotions. We're going to have to master our ability to focus and, and, and be aware. And the great thing about that is that you can switch to being focused and, and switch off being aware and vice versa. Because if you're too aware, you're going to be looking at things you don't want to look at. Mm. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> oh, look, there's a giant over there. <laughs> <laughs> so if there's um, as much we need to learn. And one of the things is to, is to follow synchronicity. To, mm. We recognize our weaknesses are going to be challenged. Mm. Uh, we can't be fixed in our thinking. Uh, we have to be uh, helping others. That's a, a big part of this. Uh, one of the things I'm trying to do is to help people find so, sacred sites near to where they live. It's a yeah. sacred site service, uh, search service, uh, which links, which tries to link sacred sites to where the emperor dragons are. Yeah, uh, yeah. 
well, since last time, one of the one of the, the big things that I spent a lot of my time right in the last or well, this year is plotting the uh, the last emperor dragon that's running through America, uh, yes. from the east coast yeah. to to the west coast, and where it's going through there, where the sites are, and how how the Type Four grid is integrating with the emperor grid. And I've been spending many hours trying to locate the sacred sites in America, and and hopefully within six months I'll have, I'll have something resembling a map that will help people <laughs> but uh, it's uh, there's a lot of work involved in that it, it 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 is and there's a time factor um what one of the things which we talk, talked about earlier and the challenge that we have in the time that we have left is to do the right thing mm. and, and we, we talked about reading books and there's so much we sh we could read but then we don't have the liberty of that time anymore um, yeah, we yeah. have to try and follow synchronicity to to decide what we should and shouldn't be doing so i can't suddenly sit back and think well i'm going to look at uh, the area of oklahoma today okay yeah yeah yes. uh, that's where i'm going to get to focus on the energy like but, but if on the other hand someone pops pops up and, and and something else pops up it says okay this is interesting uh, maybe i need to, to look at this area because mm -hmm. i've got two, two independent people um i mean just just little things uh, I could be plotting a, a line in a particular direction and someone else is suddenly pops in and says oh have you heard of this place and it's right where the line is heading yeah uh, I mean that that's one of the beauties of it you, if you feel you're doing the right thing by, by following yeah, yeah. synchronicity yeah and, and that's kind of like what we've all got to do yes absolutely so I mean you've, you've talked about time and there's a time pressure um, uh, can you just expand on that a little that sense where that sense of urgency is coming from and, and okay. I'm sure actually a lot of people watching this also have a sense like you know something's going to happen something's going to happen but because it is building there is some the sense of something building at the energetic level you can feel it you, you can you, you we're, we're in that transition zone we're, we're going into the galactic current mm -hmm. sheet uh, and we're already getting uh, the waves coming through the first waves in fact we've had several waves and we've got the next really really big wave is coming in it begins on the 9th of december and it builds and it hits us on the 20th of december when we're doing our, our gatherings and this is the 9th of december 2020 yes yes yeah. so you, 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 you need to prepare <laughs> not this, not the, this is not the final one this is just the the one that we're it's, it's like we're learning to ride the smaller waves before the big yeah. one comes yeah. yeah so um this is your chance to, to to learn to ride this wave and it will be tumultuous you know mm. it will be like you're just drawn all over the coals it's just a, mm -hmm. imagine a big wave tumbling you over and over and over and, and it's kind of like washing you and rinsing you yeah uh, but it, it will be getting into your cells and it will be energizing your cells and reprogramming your, your DNA, if you like. Mm. Uh, and, and, um, and, and this whole reprogramming of our DNA, by the way, is really important that you allow the galactic energy to do this and, and mm. nothing, uh, nothing more man-made, if you know what I mean. Yes, <laughs> yes, absolutely. So you, you don't want any kind of like uh, weirdly designed RNA injection to... Yeah begin to change and switch off cells in your dna level that that uh, you may not want switched off yeah, uh, yeah. Say more than that but, but purification is something which is part of the process we have to we have to be really careful what we eat and drink and this mm. is the fasting aspect of this uh, but uh, from the point of view of timing um if the hopi indians are correct we had seven years from december uh, january 2019 or a bit, a bit before that uh, it, it was it was 17 so that we it, the final wave when it's supposed to hit was calculated to december 2 2024 um but that's when the if it's right with the galactic currency that's when the 180 to 200 years starts that's when okay. the count starts mm. but what we don't know is if that's the start of the main wave and we've got a, a cosmic element to this but we also have a plasma element to this yeah. So there's going to be destabilization on a physical level as well as on a, an energetic level. And that physical level uh, uh, has been seen in the past with uh, a degree of differences or different reactions that you can get from the, from the sun. Mm. Anything from a large solar flare to what's been talked about as a mini nova. Yeah. And, and there are prophecies which talk about... Uh, 
solar events mm. um, and the consequences of solar events. I won't go into them now because there are quite a few, but read my book, Grail, Grail Bound, on, on those. But uh, mm. um, we're going to need probably expect some form of solar activity because the electric plasma wave is uh, is going to hit our sun. And, and contrary to the mainstream physics, our sun is basically electric. Okay, it's not a big just a big fusion reactor this is yeah. it, it, it is affected galactically by these large plasma waves and and yeah. if we have a, an earth facing large flare we could easily have our electromagnetic systems our grids down for three four months maybe so we could have no electricity for three or four months that's the kind of for me the worst scale yeah yeah um, and, and you'll have other people who are who will try to create even more fear. Yes. And you're going to find, this is what, what the, the mainstream will be doing. Uh, in, in nearer the time, you're going to find the mainstream news are going to be telling us about how the sun is going to be massively disruptive and it's going to kill large numbers of people. And we have to hide underground yeah. and all these things. And, yeah. the, and, and, and they're going to be putting huge scare factoring out there because what... What we also need to recognize is that that fear is something we can't have in our hearts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because of the cosmic energy that's coming, we need to be positive. So yeah. in many ways, we have to stand on the surface and take the cosmic energy, if you like, and embrace yes. that without fear. Yeah. Um, and I'm not going to go any further than that, but, but on, 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 the, on the side of things, but um, we have increasing waves of, of cosmic energy coming through increasing uh, surges of energy on, on the, uh, the, the psychic level if you like and um, we, we're being granted if you like larger and larger waves leading yeah. up to this so but this I, is uh, like it's it's kind of like um we're having a training period as it were the next few years, what's unfolding, if we can, if we can keep our heads and not give in to the fear, if we can have mastery of our emotions, if we can have an understanding of what's playing out, we're being given a chance to, to get used to an ever increasing level of this new energy coming in so that when we're hit with the bigger waves, we're hopefully in a position to, uh, to to sort of stand up and not not be knocked flat by it. Yeah, but you, you, an important thing here is to re to remember you're not alone. The, yeah. There are beings on all the other worlds, angels and other things. They're aware yeah. of this. They're going through these changes as well. Yeah. They want to help us. Yeah. Our ancestors are aware of this. They want to help us. Uh, mm. our, our really distant ancestors have been through something similar. They want to yeah. help us. There's a lot of uh, of of, of uh, assistance and 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 and. Mm. You, even people like uh, Rudolf Steiner, when you listen to his work, he was preparing people for this. Yeah. You know, over a hundred years ago, when he knew people would, the people he was talking to, he knew would be reincarnated to go through this time again. Mm. Okay, so to, it, it, there's a lot of preparation gone into this. This is why so many souls have been reborn right now. So we yeah. can experience this. I, I had an interesting thought. <laughs> this is really weird, but, just recently, I had, a, I had a thought that we need to do this because there aren't enough angels in heaven. <laughs> uh, it's it's kind of like if we can if we can overcome our, ourselves, if you like, and, and move to this interdependence, this form of group consciousness, and, and lift everybody up in this sort of uh, critical threshold where we, we reach a morphic resonance through from group group con group uh, connection through meditation. Then I think this, uh, there's a chance for all of us to evolve our consciousness. Yeah. And um, that can only lead to more angels in heaven, if you like. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Sorry about the background distraction. One, uh, one of my angels is playing up. <laughs> um, that's a fascinating, fascinating thought, um, Rory. Thank you. Well, we have covered a huge amount of ground. Um, you know, there's. Um, we we need we need to get master of our emotions and not give in to the fear we are at an extraordinary you know sort of point and stuff is happening and unfolding around us that humanity hasn't been through certainly within its remembered history um 
so many things are unfolding. Uh, there are things that we need to do, like you said, you know, go to sacred sites, meditate, use the, you know, sort of tune into the harmony times. Is there anything, anything further that, that we've missed or that needs to be added or? Um, expect the unexpected. Uh, it, it is it, it, it is so important to recognize that uh, no, none, none of us none, none, not one person has all the answers yeah uh, and if you have a mindset that you individually can help that's good yeah. because you may be able to do something or think of something or have something come through to you that you can share that will help somebody else that will help somebody else. Yeah. So there is this, this concept of, uh, of being able to work in an interdependent way. Um, think of building small communities networks now. Yeah. Um, I mean, switch off news, switch off, get rid of your TV. Mm. It's just rubbish. Yes. You, know, you, need, you yeah. need to reconnect with the earth just just get out into nature become yeah. more aware trust trust the information you get coming through yeah and this is you know this is so much of what um we've been disconnected from this sense of connection to nature so you can read the signs more uh this sense of trusting ourselves we, that a lot of that is deliberately taken away from us i feel in the way we're brought up and our our education so we need to get back to that and get back to that quickly don't we yeah and, and i come back to the to the emotions uh just briefly is that uh, are, are you joyful enough you know are you peaceful enough are you uh, positive enough uh, yeah. are you uh, uh are you uh do you have enough self-esteem okay all these things you know that we are strong in some and, and weak in others yeah we will be tested our weaknesses will be tested mm. so look for them in advance of the test <laughs> yeah be aware so that you can respond <laughs> yeah i mean look you be prepared yeah it's basically you know if mm. you know that you've got uh, you're a bit of a depressive mm. okay work on that one because they'll challenge you your depression yeah. will be challenging and if you want to succeed you need to to prepare in that sense yeah um but uh, I, haven't, I, mean, I don't have the answers. Or I, I'm just mm. trying to follow synchronicity, um, which is like the grail path, the individuated path of, of, of Jung. Um, and, and if you're led down a, p a particular direction, explore it yes. and, and see what happens. That's, that's the fascinating thing that I'm finding with people now, is that they, they will suddenly re rediscover what they should be doing in life. Mm. Uh, and uh that's the kind of awakening that's going on right now yeah and that's, that's fascinating yeah and it's being open to that and fear doesn't allow you to be open to that um and neither does resistance to change um because it keeps you in a contracted state so we've got to try and keep keep ourselves open haven't we and anything that contributes to that openness is is where we should be and what we should be doing what, is there anything else from the point of view of the interview? Is, is there anything else that you sort of just want to finish up by saying? Um, I think we've covered pretty much everything that we're going to be able to cover without opening up another rabbit hole. Yes. <laughs> there's, was... there's a lot there for people to sort of uh, deal with and take in as it is. Um, as I said it, as I said at the beginning, if um, people join up, with your newsletter, sign up to your newsletter. You do keep people informed. It's, it's a wonderful newsletter. There is so much to read in it every month. Um, so that's why yeah. people keeping up to date. And you have, you're setting up this sacred sites um, portal on your website for people to find out where they can go to locally. Um, it's a sacred site service at the moment. I, uh, yeah. that, that they can, um, find on my website and, and read more about that and uh, we can look then look to find sites near to where they are yeah um, and, and yeah yeah that's, and it is just yeah people come together come together in meditation small groups of you rise above the fear because the fear is going to be what undoes everyone um and 
yeah, it's almost an emotional flip, isn't it, Rory? It's be excited about this time. It is an amazing time to be alive. Um, surf the changes, be flexible, keep an open mind, um, be open to the synchronicities uh, and you'll be fine. Everyone will come through this fine, but it's the resistance that, that, that brings in the suffering. So, I've just mentioned that the surfing analogy is quite a nice one because you can't learn to ride a wave without getting wet, without going over the falls and being tumbled yeah. and, and brushed all over. And you, you're you're going to just get up and paddle out again and try and catch the next wave, and eventually you'll you'll learn to to, to paddle and get catch the big wave. And um, yeah, you won't yes. be all, all yeah, because it 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 is going to be difficult. Yeah. So and, and we're being given some training waves, so I think we need to see it that way and embrace it as that. Um, Rory, I can't thank you enough. You know, all of the internet problems and the, you know, sort of the working from home issues. <laughs> thank you for bearing with it. Um, it's, as always, it's been so interesting talking to you. And, you know, the work you're doing is, is uh, uh, amazing. And I know you stand as a light for so many people trying to understand what's going on in these times. So I thank you for that. Thank you. If we can do anything more on this in the future, then, then we stand ready. I'll, I'll let you know if I get more information in coming through. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much, Sarah, for, your, for, for, for hosting this. That's been very good of you. Thank you. It's a pleasure. And thank you to everyone who's watching in. And as I say, keep tuned, um, sign up with Rory and we'll just keep the information coming as and when we know it. Thank you.